Okay, everyone, I guess I'll uh, get started in the presentation. Uh, my name is Tim McCutcheon. I'm the president of Wealth Minerals. We are a lithium explorer and developer with our assets in Chile. It's our standard disclaimer. So Wealth has just signed 90 million shares out. Right now we have a market cap of about $140 million. We're trading right now at a 52-week high of $1.81. Uh, the company's core focus is on lithium assets in Chile. We have the team to have a competitive advantage there. The key part about wealth strategy is to have a competitive advantage when it does things so that we're not simply playing at the casino, that we are able to do things that others cannot do, and that's the added value for our shareholders. I think we all, the, the basic wealth plan was this whole endeavor, if you will, started out uh, about 18 months ago when a fellow named Hank Van Alphen, who's our CEO, uh, met up with Marcelo Awad, who was the ex-CEO of Antofagasta. Prior to that, he was executive vice president of Cadelco. And the two gentlemen got together and realized that there was a real opportunity in the lithium space. And of course, Marcelo Awad has enormous influence, contacts, potential to get things done in Chile in a way that no one else does, given his past role as CEO of one of the world's largest copper miners and executive vice president of, I think it is the world's largest copper miner. Uh, so, and copper in Chile is a big deal. So the two gentlemen got together and realized they wanted to be in the lithium space. They realized there was a paradigm shift going on in the world. And so they created a platform. That platform was then used to acquire assets. Uh, we first started out with a project called the Trinity Project, which is to the east of the Atacama Solar, right on the Chile-Argentina uh, border. Uh, and then the main prize that we got in around October of last year was a 46,000 hectare concession in the Atacama Solar. We'll talk about this as we go through the, the presentation, but the point is, is that we recognized early on that if you're going to be in the lithium space, you have a choice of hard rock and brines and brines historically are the cheapest cost assets out there. If you're gonna be in brines, you wanna be in a place like Chile, because if you're in a place like Chile, it has the longest operating history of brine assets in the Atacama. And, uh, and that's where our focus has been, and the resources are there. I'm not gonna go through this, I think we've already heard the, the lithium story uh, quite a bit already. There we go. So what I will mention is there's a lot of discuss about supply and demand. There's a lot of discussion and confusion and different opinions about where the world is going in terms of lithium being used. What I noticed in the panel was, was one thing that I did want to bring up uh, in my presentation was half of the world's supply right now is from lithium brine assets. Uh, no one's ever going to find a new brine asset. You're not going to go to the jungles of Africa and uncover a brine asset. There's not any brine assets underneath the, the, the ice cap of Greenland. Everyone knows where they are. You go to Google Maps, the entire world knows where every single Solar is. And they have a pretty good idea of how much lithium is in each of those Solars. It's essentially age of the Solar, so the size of the Solar is a huge determinant in how much sediments have been deposited over time. And therefore, we have a pretty good idea how much lithium is in there. So we can talk about the timing of getting involved in the business, but what we really can't talk about is that it's, it's a fixed quantity of stuff that everyone knows about. So think of it this way. You know, if you are staking ground in Kuwait in 1920 for oil, you might get the timing a little bit wrong in terms of when you stake that ground, but they're not making it anymore. And clearly, if you think there's a paradigm shift happening in the world, and of course we all do because we're here at this conference, then the question is getting your hands on it now because it's not going to be around. Particularly, like I said, no one's going to find a lithium solar under the Antarctic ice cap. We know exactly where they all are. So that's a key thing in terms of the future rollout of supply and demand to keep in mind. Chile, again, why Chile? Chile, one of the key things that we also think is very important to keep in mind is it's a relatively young business, as we know. I mean, the lithium mining has been around for a while, initially you know, for medicine, also for nuclear uh, triggers. Um, it's only recently that it's really been caught on in terms of the, the applications that we all know about, cellular phones, lithium ion batteries, cars, and everything else. The reality, though, is that in Chile, you have one of the world's oldest, longest operating lithium solar process, the Atacama Solar, which is Rockwood and SQM. 
Because we're in Chile, we can hire people in their own country that have decades of experience in this business in the same geological formation where we're operating. So they know exactly what they're doing. There's no learning curve. Uh, and so it's a much lower barrier to entry to get things done in Chile for us because we're already there. And you have a huge pool of know-how and human capital that you can draw on that you really can't draw on in other parts of the world. So that's our core asset. Uh, it's a 46,000 hectare uh, land position in the Atacama Solar. What I'd like to point out is if you see sort of the square type figures in the southern part uh, of the Solar next to the words Corfo, those are the drying ponds for one third of the world's lithium output. One third of the world's lithium output comes from those drying ponds. That's Rockwood, well, Albemarle, and SQM is operating there. The, northern, the southern part of our license is only 30 kilometers away from SQM's operations, so it's quite close. And also, if you think about the nature of what a solar is, in general, we're talking about a basin that over thousands and thousands of years has filled up with sediments and has, uh, you know, has evaporated off, and you have this, all these salts and minerals deposited in the solar. The geologic complexity is due to layers, the strata, but within that strata, it tends to be fairly uniform throughout. The reason that's important is because we know that in the South, they're mining the world's highest grade lithium brines under commercial production today, 1,800 ppm. Nothing else comes close to that right now in the world in terms of uh, uh, lithium brines under exploitation. Sorry, there's a, so that's a close-up of the project. So we acquired this project in October uh, of last year. Um, the key focus on it was getting our hands on the project. Right now we're doing the community uh, relations work and the geophysical work and the permitting work uh, to really begin the fun stuff that's gonna start this summer. Chile is a very mining friendly country. I think we can all agree that it's a mining friendly country, but it's also a very regulatory, it's, it's a very uh, regulated system. They want you to do work, but they don't let you do it willy-nilly. You have to get the appropriate uh, permits and permissions to do things. We are in the process of getting our pertinencia. Our pertinencia will allow us to do certain work on the Atacama license, most importantly drilling about four to five deep wells on the Salar so that we can test our hypothesis that the mineralization that's being uh, extracted and mined in the southern part of the Salar uh, continues up into the north. The chart to the lower right, though, you can see that there's nothing that comes close in terms of the grade uh, of the other commissar in terms of other uh, peer assets. Again, you know, at the end of the day, if you're going to be in this business, you want to have best-in-class assets. If you have the opportunity to have something next to the lowest cost assets in the world, uh, again, our discussion that we just had about the geology of the solar, we have strong reason to believe that we're going to be very close in the lower end uh, of, of this graph when it comes to pricing, cost of production. What I'm going to do in a minute is just give you a little bit of outline. Some of you are already familiar with the name, and I just wanted to go over what it is we're planning to do in a little more detail so that you can understand the opportunity that Wealth Minerals has. If you think of the Atacama Salar, in the southern part of the Salar is where, again, one third of world output comes from. They're extracting brines basically from the top 50 meters of the Salar. Now, if you think about a, what a Salar is, a dried, sake, a dried lake bed or seabed that has various strata over the, 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 the eons of, of aquifers and water coming in, evaporating off and leaving behind sediments. There's a certain layer of sediment called halite salts, and halite salts are very co coincident with lithium mineralization. And the halite salt horizon is at the top of the Salar in the south in that first 50 meters. And as we all know, SQM and Rockwood have had tremendous success in extracting brine, lithium-bearing brine, from that halite salt horizon. Now, historically, there was a hole that was drilled very deep smack in the middle of the Atacama Salar to find oil. Someone had the money to do it, I guess they decided to do it. But they didn't find any oil, but what they did leave behind was an entire record of the stratigraphy of that hole, which we have. 
BHP had a northern part of the Atacama Salar and drilled a very shallow hole because they wanted to tap water for one of their copper mining projects adjacent, well, nearby to, to this area. And we have that data. Now, if I go back just a second to the, there we go. So think of the Atacama Salar as a teardrop. And we have aquifers coming up from the bottom, but we also have a source of fresh water coming in from the north that's coming into the Salar and washing down to the south. And then, of course, the Atacama Desert is the driest place on the planet. Uh, that water coming in from the aquifers and the water coming down from the top uh, evaporates off. And uh, then you get your, your brine, your salt bed, and you get your brines. Now, the key part, though, is that in order to really get the juicy part, if you will, of our property, is we have to drill below the area where that fresh water is coming in. So the halite salt horizon, we believe, is basically dips down below that incoming water, down to around the 400, 600 meter horizon. As I mentioned a little earlier, we're going to drill there three to four holes uh, this summer. And when we do that, we will demonstrate that we have material very similar to what is being currently exploited in the south, 30 kilometers to the south of us. And I think a key thing to keep in mind, I used to be an equity analyst, and one of the things I used to tell my clients when I spoke with them is that you want an analyst who has a general idea, and even if they're off by 50%, you can still make a lot of money. If we have 50% of the grade that's being extracted in the South, we'll still be the second best solar grade in the world. So keep that in mind. That's the upside that we have there. As far as our resource goes, 46,000 hectares is larger than most solars in their entirety to begin with, number one. Uh, and number two, uh, if you think about Rockwood and SQM, they've actually never come out with a resource on their uh, on their properties that they're, mining, that they're extracting brine from in the south of the other common because they don't need to. Their mine life there is effectively forever. It's certainly longer than any of us are going to be alive. So the key thing is demonstrating the grade, and that's what we're going to do this summer. Another project we have is Laguna Verde. This is a project that's the south uh, east of us. Uh, this is a project that's basically a solar that hasn't dried out yet at the surface. Uh, we're testing that right now. One of the things that we've done is we've hired Tenova Bateman to be a technology provider for us. Many of you probably know that the Dead Sea in Israel is, is currently mined for magnesium and for potassium. That technology is very applicable for this type of scenario. And so we're working on a technology solution with them to commercially exploit uh, Laguna Verde. Additionally, if you remember what we spoke about earlier about collecting the land while it's still available at a decent price, the Trinity project is uh, just to the east of the Atacama Salar. We've acquired that, and we've just recently acquired the Five Salars project, which is basically bits and pieces of five other Salars throughout Chile that give us a seat at the negotiating table when the inevitable consolidation process in this industry happens. It's a little bit of the team, but what I really wanted to do is just take my time to get through to you the point that Brian Salars historically, and we certainly think, are the best place to be if you're going to be in the lithium mining business. If you're going to be in brine solars, you want to be in Chile. And if you're going to be in Chile, you want to be in the Atacama, because it's, 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 we're not trying to vent the wheel. You want to invest in a company that has the lowest risk profile possible. The Atacama Solar has been a, a low-risk producer for decades, uh, and we're right on top of it. Thank you very much.